Paul, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the roll call tonight, I have uh, all board members present. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda tonight? I do have one amendment to the agenda to propose uh, moving resolution G and under new business up to resolution to make it to A um, for the sale of bonds and then uh, adding in the green school announcement uh, in B, thus moving to the uh, winter activities report as C and such as follows. Do I have a motion to accept uh, the amended agenda? I'll make that motion. By Tom? Second. Second by Dan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I carry 7 0. Uh, on the consent agenda tonight, we have the wire transfer disbursement summary, the bank, the bank reconciliation statement, and the approval of the board meeting minutes from the March 4th, the March 25th study session, and the board meeting on March 27th. Uh, resignations, terminations, and non renewals as follows. And um, I have the resolution to accept the gifts, which by state law I'm required to read. Sit in here, Martha. Oh, yep. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, consent agenda? So moved. By Stacy, second. Second. By Chad. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I carry seven zero. I don't have the, uh, the verbiage for the I'll read it off this one. Uh, the resolution for acceptance of gifts, whereas the following have generously donated to the Private Lake Savage School District monetary donation of $66 from Shane and Abby Cusera to Jeffers Pond through the Wells Fargo Community Support Campaign, a donation of $47.31 from Jane Canton to Jeffers Pond through the Wells Fargo Community Challenge Support Campaign, a donation of $150 from Ameriprise Financial for Hidden Oaks uh, School Student Stock Scholarship Program, $200 from Mr. and Mrs. Decker to the Jeffers Pond through Ameriprise Financial for Music in Mrs. Dewar's class, a donation of $85.80 anonymously through the United Way for Jeffers Pond Elementary, a donation of $100 from Jeffrey and Noreen Dix through Amherst Financial for the high school, a donation of $29.26 from Laura Willett for Hidden Oaks Middle School, a donation of $2,500 from Jeff Petermeyer for audio in the weight room at the high school. A donation of $1,000 from the Prior Lake football boosters for the Prior Lake High School. A donation from the Wells Fargo Community Support Campaign as follows. $126.93 from Loretta Spurley. $57.69 from Brion Silman. $46.14 from Marlis Kesme. $36 from Jayla Plant, $25 from Laura Herdix, and $150 from Diane Hart. Oh, and a value of kind of uh, three sets of golf clubs and accessories from Steve Fisher for the Physical Education Department at the high school, approximate value of $400. Whereas there are no conditions with these gifts, therefore be it resolved by the Prior Lake Savage Area School Board that we gratefully accept these gifts. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, gifts to the Prior Lake Savage School District? So moved. By Rich. Second. Second. By Dan. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries 7-0.
Thank you. That's a new formality for us uh, from the state of Minnesota. So. Uh, moving on to uh, Laker Pride, I have the youth and government mentors and members, if they're present. Come forward, please. Okay, we have eighth grade teacher over here from Twin Oaks, Allison Zach, and Dave Broat from the YMCA. And were we having a student present as well? We, um, our, student, our student that wanted to be present, Spencer Will, is actually at a band concert tonight. Um, so. Multiple demands. <laughs> yes. Multiple yes. demands. Yeah. Um, we have a wonderful partnership with the YMCA. And one of the ways that we've been partnering and growing a program is through the Youth and Government Program. And, um, Allison Zach has taken that on and uh, has had a great year with it. Do you want to tell us about what happened with your students there? Absolutely. If that's okay, I'll have Dave kind of explain real quick what it is. Sure. Uh, YMCA Youth and Government is a civic leadership program uh, that's run through the YMCA. It was actually founded in 1946, so it's been long standing in the state. Um, and this year we had about 1,500 participants around the state attend our model assembly, which is a mop government that covers over four days in January and then a model United Nations program that uh, serves about 500 people. So we started this program about three years ago in Prior Lake and, and we're serving eight to 10 kids a year. And it's currently uh, been turned into a lettering program too. So we anticipate the numbers to grow uh, rapidly over the next few years. So with partnerships with the school districts and teachers to have us come in and share these opportunities, we're, we're able to get kids involved in different civic leadership programs and understanding government community a lot better. And um, I had one student attend the model, um, model UN Nations um, uh, activity, and he did, actually we counted that also as his service requirement, and he had just a wonderful experience. He met, you know, many different kids from different uh, schools and participated in this wonderful kind of active um, active piece of government, learning about government. And he came back and shared it with our entire class and kind of got the kids excited. I think, you know, the more kids that go, the more kids will want to go, um, especially when it comes to middle schoolers. They, they have a little bit of peer pressure. So um, I think it'll grow through the years. Well, congratulations, Allison. And thank you, Dave, for representing the Y today. We have our Laker um, certificates for you, and I have one. Do I have the Optimus Club uh, or to me? Oh, we do. Come on forward. We have another wonderful partner, and that is the Optimist Club. The Prairie Lake Optimist Club has been a fabulous partner of ours for many, many years. One of our first partners, which we missed last week when we were celebrating due to the snowstorm, we weren't able to recognize them. We're coming to one of your meetings very soon. But tonight we're recognizing the students that have won the um, Optimus Oratorical and the Optimus Essay Contest, two different contests that the Optimist Club um, uh, organizes and, and uh, provides for us. So we have students that have won and um, uh, the, the contest. And so do you want to tell us who you are? We'll pass the microphone. You can tell us who you are. Well, I'm Michael Lawrenceer, president of the Optimist Club here in Prior Lake. Hi, I'm Michaela Rush, and I go to the high school, and I'm a part of the Junior Optimist Club. Hi, my name is Maddie Sabin. I'm a senior, and I also go to Prior Lake High School. My name is Sanjana Krishna Murphy, and I'm in elementary school, and I go to Herrick Bishop Elementary. I'm Parker Jornby, and I go to Hidden Oaks Middle School. 
<coughs> I'm Sue Heaton, and I coordinated the oratorical contest. And I'd also like to um, point out Lee Schimmick here, who is the essay coordinator. Um, without these people, this would not be happening. So we have a great team. And we have um, uh, a great uh, opportunities for our students to participate in the oratorical. They have to prepare a speech and they have to give it multiple times and practice. They have wonderful coaches that uh, Sue um, Heaton really works hard to uh, recruit and, and is a live part of that process. So we're very proud of all of you and your achievements and our high school junior optimists for helping being a great uh, advocate for the students and a role model. So that's awesome. So we have a few certificates we're going to hand out to you and congratulate you. Essay winner and winner con winners of the essay contest. So that's why they're standing here with our middle school students. And Maddie say right here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations to both of you. Congratulations. And then Tori could not be here today and the other students. So I will give these to you. Eric, if you want to come forward with uh, your sports teams that uh, are rec represented tonight. I know we have gymnastics, wrestling, the dance teams, and individual swimming and speech. Is he shy? Does he want to talk? His fellow wrestler has left him up. Ladies and gentlemen, board members, uh, these are representatives of our um, state participants this year. Um, we've got Hanny, Hannah, um, Jenna, right? Annika, she's got a sister that looks just like her, and Ryan Norton. So these are two of our dancers, first time ever with dance uh, making it to the state tournament. Annika represents our, uh, our gymnastics team, first time ever making it to the state tournament. And Ryan represents our wrestling team. Um, and were you at three years in a row? Three years in a row for Ryan making it to the state tournament. So these are our, our captains of those teams. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Great seasons. step back just for one minute we have to do a roll call vote on the acceptance of gifts um, like I said it's a new policy from the uh, state of Minnesota so I have a motion to second to accept the gifts uh, as read um, Chad I rich I Tom I I I Dan. I I Lee. I pass the seven zero thanks Lee <coughs> Um, at this point, we'll have the open forum. We have 15 minutes set aside for citizens to uh, give input to the board uh, about that. Um, it's basically dialogue from the community to the board um, for the board to listen. And uh, I guess we have a couple of people tonight who have filled out some forms. Um, Dean, I'm not sure if you wanted to speak or if you wanted to have the, uh, the other members. Okay. Yeah, and they're welcome to come forward if they want. Um, Yeah, I think Jesse just wanted to talk. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dean Newman. I'm a parent of Ari Newman, who's a, a junior at Prior Lake High School. 
And we're here tonight to talk about a class, a German for S2S class, that was offered uh, for enrollment, but uh, is not uh, being offered um, uh, for the fall because of uh, the number of people that signed up for the class. Um, we're here today to um, ask the board to work with Principal Lund and the German teachers to explore every opportunity, every possibility to uh, try to offer this class for these students who feel very committed to uh, studying the German language. We have three students here. We have some um, ideas and thoughts about why this is important. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jesse Schneider and I'm a junior at the high school. And first and foremost, we'd like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak to you today. Uh, we, are, we are here on behalf of the students of German for s 2 s and we are here because we believe we should be able to have German for s 2 s despite the fact we do not have the required amount of students. Uh, here are some reasons why we think German for s 2 s would be a good addition to Prior Lake High School. Uh, well, first off, I want to let you know that we aren't here because our teachers are making us. <laughs> We're here because we want to be and we want to have the class. And uh, two, we want to have this class because we want to continue on in German into the future and we don't just see it as just another credit needed to graduate. Uh, we created a petition that 195 students signed in support of us that was circulated through the German classes. And I'd like to show that to you guys if you don't mind. Sure. My name is Austin Peden. I'm also a junior at Prior Lake High School. And uh, this petition that Jesse is passing around wasn't only signed by people taking German for s to s next year, but also some that would take it in the future if you allowed it at the high school. Uh, we've worked, some of us in the room here have worked very hard to uh, get to where we're at since middle school. I personally started in eighth grade with the German program. And now I'm in 11th grade in the last year, what would be my last year. And I really want to continue and get myself prepared before I go to college. Um, if we get this chance, we don't get to take a year off and we don't lose some of the knowledge that we would if we took that year off. And we uh, get college credit for taking the class and doing well in the class, which I anticipate doing. Um, we can test into higher classes into college and it would get uh, better prestige for Prior Lake High School around the, I guess, the state. Um, most of the students who uh, signed up for this class would be in their fifth year of German and it wouldn't just be some peop a bit large group of people who some of them didn't care, it'd be a smaller group that actually cared and actually wanted to be in this class. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ari Newman. I am currently a junior at Prior Lake High School. Um, I would like to add some points about why I think we should have this class. Um, all of us are at a pivotal point in this language. We are becoming, we are at a point of almost becoming fluent. Um, and if we did not have this class, this um, gap in this, in our language would significantly hinder our progress if we wanted to continue on in the German language. Um, also, um, it's, this is not a question of teacher qualification. Um, they are, I can tell you right now, they're some of the best educators I've ever had in my high school career. Um, they worked very hard with St. Cloud State University uh, to get this approved. Um, I think they would be uh, very pleased to see this class go through. Um, and once again, I'd like to thank you for your time, uh, uh, letting us display our opinions about this matter. Um, we hope that you take our concerns under consideration. Um, we hope you can make an exemption because this will not only better we the students, but also the foreign language education program at Prior Lake High School and future generations down the line. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have any other members of the community who'd like to address the board at this time? Seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, personnel items with Matt.
personnel is the approval of candidates for employment. I recommend the following candidates for employment and seeking board approval. Total motion to accept the uh, candidates for employment. So moved. By Lee? Second. By Tom? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll abstain. Okay. It carries uh, six, zero, and one. And next, I present the following needs of absence in seeking board approval. Do I have a motion to accept the leave of absences as follows? So moved. By Dan, second. Second. By Stacy. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries seven, zero. Do I have a motion to accept the district retirements as follows? I'll make that motion. By Tom? Second. Second by Chad. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It carries 7 0. All right. And next, um, I have four job descriptions to bring before the board. The first of which is the special education program specialist. This was a position that the board approved recently. It is a new position within a special ed. Secondly, I'll go through them and see if, we, if there are any questions on any of them individually. Secondly, a new position of a physical therapist. This is also a new position in the district. We've been offering this service over time. It's not a new service, simply in the way in which we're offering it, which is to provide that service in-house, um, which is significantly more affordable. And we'll, we also believe that it will increase uh, the quality of the programming that we're able to offer within physical therapy. And then thirdly, I, I do think this one's been miscategorized um, as a new job description. We have a psychologist job description there. That is actually a revision as opposed to a new job description. Um, we have uh, been offering those services, but we want to take the opportunity to revise that job description. And then lastly, also a revised job description is just that of the outside maintenance person. Do I have a motion to accept? Okay. Do I motion to accept the or the approval of the job descriptions as follows? So moved. By Dan. Second. By Lee. Is there any questions or discussion on this? I, I have one. Just the the current psychologist is currently qualified under the what we have to change in the the language yes. for that yeah. job description. So there is no job loss with that. That's correct. Okay. Yes. We employ a number of school psychologists. All of them meet the, the qualification. Okay. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries 7 0. All right. And lastly, I have um, an additional staff request. I will actually be presenting another uh, staff request later in the board meeting. But first, um, an educational support position. This is a request for an additional robotics assistant coach for the following school year. And as we've taken more of the more of that programming on over time as a district, this is a position that we've identified as a need in order to keep that that program robust and, uh, and keep the, the good work they've been doing moving. Um, do I have acceptance? A uh, motion to accept the additional staffing for the robotics assistant coach. So moved. By Stacy. Second. Second by Tom. Any questions? Um, I just have one question. What are the numbers that are becoming involved with robotics now? Uh, the numbers for student participation, 70, 70 students. Okay. And current staffing is a head coach with one assistant? 
with, uh, with um, two part time. Two, two part time, okay. <clears throat> I believe that when uh, those two part-time assistants, Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, do help organize the middle school program as well? Yes, they're, they're involved in the, well, kind of the JV, the FTC program sure. versus the FRC program. So we're suggesting holding those two positions as is and then creating an assistant robotics coach for the high school uh, varsity program. For the varsity program, correct. correct. Thank you. As we move from a, a parent um, organized and run um, organization that Joe Passaferro started and has done an excellent job of, of growing over these years, um, we're now taking it uh, into the district and so we believe we need to have the two positions in order to make it robust and make sure we have the safety of the students at the front of our, uh, our vision of what we're doing at all times. When I think this program has grown, I'm guessing every year, I mean from what I've heard, I just. I'm assuming there's good numbers, right? <laughs> Do I have a motion to accept the additional staffing of the robotics assistant coach? So moved. By Rich. Second. By Tom. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Carry 7 0. Moving on to uh, new business, we have the resolution for the sale of bonds. Good evening, Chair Sorensen, board members, Dr. Gruber. Um, Gary Olson from Ailes and Associates, our financial advisors, is here tonight to speak on these resolutions for the sale of bonds. Um, earlier this evening, we um, handed out two um, pre sale reports um, for discussion, and so you can see what the possibilities will be for the sale of these bonds. And I'll let Gary talk um, through this with you. Good evening, Mr. Chair, um, Dr. Kruger, members of the board. Pleasure to be here. Um, we have two different bonds. These have been in the planning stage for quite some time now and are part of a big, bigger overall structure. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is the $12.5 million general obligation alternative facility bonds, 2013A. And uh, these are bonds that are going to be issued to uh, deal with health and safety issues issues that are eligible under the health and safety program and uh, have been approved by the Department of Ed uh, and your five-year plan. Um, the bonds will be approximately 13 and 13 years, eight months long uh, with maturities in years 22 to 26. And the reason for the delay in the maturities is remember what we're trying to do is build this whole plan with all the different moving parts without any tax increase. And so uh, if you look at your existing debt, it drops off as we get down to those later years. So that's the, that's the time when we can add in the new, the new debt. So that's why, that's why the delay there. And these bonds, not all of them, but a significant portion of them will be eligible to be refunded at some point down the, ride, down the road. Um, I'm not going to go through all these things. Um, you will get rated by Moody's and Investor Service. You already have a AA3. And last time we did the refunding, we went through what we call a conference call where we talked to Moody's. And we will be doing that again coming up shortly. Um, when we look at the time frame, you can see that. Now, we're doing something a little bit different with these bonds. Uh, and we did this with your refunding a couple of years ago as well. Rather than Typically what we do is we would schedule the bond sale for one of your board meetings, which our next ones are May 6th and May 20th. The problem is right now the bond sale calendar is very, very full. And there's a lot of competition. You know, you, if you sell bonds on a certain day, the underwriter is looking, you know, they can pick and choose kind of which bonds. So we're looking for some flexibility as to when we sell those bonds. So the idea is in the resolutions tonight, what you will do is authorize the board chair and the superintendent to approve those resolutions as long as they meet a certain parameter. And if that, if, if that works, then what happens is we take the bids, uh, as long as they're good bids and within what we think reasonable, reasonable rates and everybody's on board, um, the board chair and superintendent authorize that. And then the next meeting, this will happen on May 15th. 
and then on May 20th at your next board meeting, the board would authorize would pass a resolution that authorizes the action that the board chair and superintendent had taken. So you, this board will still have an, an opportunity to, uh, to step in on this as well. Um, and that gives us a little flexibility and hopefully we can sell the bonds on a day when, when the calendar isn't so crowded and there isn't quite so much competition for, for bids. Um, the other key piece to this is, um, if you look on page two at the top, we will be coming back in the next month or two. You have a $55 million bond issue that is eligible to be advanced refunded. And part of the way we're fitting all, this, all these pieces together and, try and controlling the tax impact is by doing a refunding on those bonds and lowering taxes by, by the savings on the refunding. The other thing we probably will be doing is we may end up, in order to make it all fit and work, we probably may add a little, we may stretch out the term of the existing bonds so that we get enough refunding savings in the first couple of years to keep that tax rate level over the time. So the refunding will be part of this overall plan. Um, the other pieces, continuing disclosure is something you're already doing. That's just notifications that you have to do every year. Um, when you sell bonds, let's say now you're going to sell bonds, some of those bonds are going to be out there until 2026. If somebody looks out and comes out in 2021 or 2022 and says, hmm, I might be interested in buying some of those Prior Lake bonds, but I want to know a little bit about Prior Lake School District. They don't want to go all the way back to the official statement that you prepared when you sold the bonds. They want to know more about what your current conditions are. And that's what continuing disclosure does is you file a report on an annual basis that gives investors information about your as I said, you are you will be rated by Moody's. You have a double A three rating. You will also participate, and you've already uh, adopted the resolution to participate in what's called the state credit enhancement program. That means the state, in addition to your full faith and pledge to levy taxes and make your bond payments, the state also stands behind stands behind your bonds. There's no cost except you make your bond payments three days early, and if something would ever happen that you didn't make the bond payment, the state would step in, pay the bondholders, and then they would get the money back by either making you in the future levy a tax levy or reducing your state aids. What that does is that nice comfort for the investors and in that they know that the bond payments are going to be made on time. So that gives you a lower interest rate. Arbitrage is another thing that we talk about. Uh, what arbitrage represents is when you sell bonds, you're selling bonds at a tax exempt rate, you get the money in, you're not spending it all the first day you get the money. You're going to get $12 million and you're not going to, Julie's not going to spend it the next day. And so meanwhile, what she's going to do is invest those dollars and there's rules and regulations about how you, how much, how you can, the IRS doesn't want you making a lot of money or making money on this unless you have certain exemptions. But it's a whole set of complicated rules, but uh, we'll, make, we'll have to make sure that, every, that those get followed as well. Um, the next page then, if you look at page three, is kind of a timeline. Back on March 4th, the board authorized the, the issuance of these bonds, and they have since published notices that you, of your intent to sell those bonds. Tonight, you're looking at approving the resolution to set that parameter for the sale on the 15th. Um, the week of the 29th, next week, we will actually be issuing what's called an official statement. If you've been on the board for a while, you remember that's a thick document, it's like a prospectus that goes out to the investors. It gives all kinds of information about your district, size of your district, number of employees, number of students, largest taxpayers, largest employers, all kinds of information that investors might want. Um, then the week of the May 6th, we will be talking to uh, Moody's Investor Service again as they get ready to rate your bonds. We'll receive the bids on the 15th. And then as I said, on the 20th, You'll actually uh, come. We'll come back here, present the bids, and uh, at that time, you'll pass a resolution ratifying the action of the board chair and the superintendent. And the closing date, you'll actually have the wire transfer will occur on about June 12th. Um, then I do have a sources and uses table. This kind of shows where the 12 and a half million comes from. The 12 and a half million par amount of the bonds. Plus, as I said, Julie will earn a little interest. Unfortunately, interest rates aren't very good right now, so there's not a lot to be made, but she will be able to earn some. Allowance for discount bidding, that's like points on a mortgage. Uh, the underwriter may or may not take that. If they don't take it, it goes to the debt service fund and can be used to pay debt service. Um, legal and fiscal costs are 
costs for uh, your financial advisor fee, your bond attorney fee, the rating agency fee, uh, some a paying agent and some county certificates that we need to get in order to do the official statement. So you'll have about twelve million three hundred sixty-five thousand dollars available to fund those uh, those projects. And then on the back is a very preliminary estimate of the uh, of what the schedule will look like. Uh, we will be fine tuning this now. Um, these rates are probably higher than where they really are, but uh, we want to be conservative and not set something up with expectations and then have the bond market come in. And we do have till May 15th for that, for the interest rates to change. Hopefully they'll go down rather than up, but we don't know. So that's kind of where we're at with that one. Then the second issue is the pre-sale report for the uh, general obligation capital facility bonds. And these are to fund defer ma deferred maintenance projects and they're issued under a different statute, uh, 123 B62. Now the thing to remember about these is they have no tax impact. What happens is the Department of Education will give you a, debt, a levy in the debt service fund to make the annual payments on these bonds, but they'll turn around and reduce your general fund levy by the same amount, and essentially that amount will come out of your operating capital, that roughly $200 a pupil unit that you get for equipment and facility maintenance. So um, there's actually no tax impact to these. And so these are scheduled as a level principal and interest payment. They, by statute, they can't exceed 15 years. And since payments are typically February 1st and August 1st, we have to, we end up with a total maturity of about 14 years and eight months so that they end in, they end before the 15th year hits. Uh, again, because you're issuing more than $10 million, the bank qualification, the ratings are all the same. Again, we're going to go through the same rating process with these, with the parameters resolution, and then the actual bids coming in on May 15th, and then the board action on May 20th. So we're going to go through that same process with these bids as well. Again, we're going to be doing the refunding. In, in this particular case, it really doesn't affect these bonds because, again, these bonds create no tax impact. Um, again, we're going to continue to follow the rules on continuing disclosure, credit enhancement, and arbitrage. And again, if you look, we have a time frame then on page three, which mimics the time frame for the other bonds, same dates, uh, same process. And then we have a sources and uses for the 5380000 Again, a small amount of interest earned, uh, an allowance for discount bidding again, and then some legal and fiscal costs, a little bit of rounding because we have to sell bonds in $5,000 increments and so we end up with about $5.3 million available for these projects. So those are the two, those are the, that's the kind of the information or background. Now the two resolutions you have before you, um, when we put these together a while ago we didn't have, we wanted to kind of wait on the, on the uh, interest rate parameters we put in there to kind of try and keep track of where the market is. And we, we want to be conservative on these. We very well expect real interest rates to be less than what we're going to put into, into here. And certainly this isn't going to impact the way the underwriters bid. They're going to bid on that day based on where the market is. Uh, the one thing I would be a little bit concerned about is if we cut it too close and let's say we set the interest rate and then the bids come in, you know, just this much higher you're in a position where you have to reject the bid and go through the process again, and that's going to delay the delay the getting the dollars available, which Julie needs to to start making bill payments on bills. So, so we are being a little bit conservative on this, and so what we're suggesting in the first one, which is the all facility bond, we're suggesting we put in a rate of 3.3 percent there. We expect it to be fully below that. Um, in fact, if you look at the run we did, I think it's at like about 3. One three or something like that, but we want to be a little bit conservative. We don't want to. We want to make sure we have a little bit of room for the market to move between now and then. So that's that's what the first resolution would do. It just modifies that resolution that you had adopted back in March and puts this parameter in so that we can have a little more flexibility in how we sell the bond. And then the second resolution would have a rate of three percent. It's actually technically a little bit longer. But you're paying bonds over the, you're paying interest or principal payments every year because you're not worrying about the tax impact. So it's level P and I 
where if you look at the second schedule, all the payments are in the last four or five years, and so that's why it's carrying a little bit higher interest rate. So those are the two, those are the two uh, resolutions that are before you. Again, since they're resolutions, they will call for uh, roll call votes. And if you have any questions, I'd be certainly glad to answer. Do I have a motion to accept the Alternative Facilities Bond Series 2013A and the Facilities Bond Series 2013B? Yeah. Tom? Have to have two separate votes. Mm -hmm. Two votes, okay. Uh, the Alternative Facilities Bond Series 2013A. By Tom? Second. Second by Stacy. Any questions? This is the one that we would have a 3.3% in yeah. that. Uh, in that, in that the larger of the two. Any questions, anyone? It would be in paragraph two there, about two thirds of the way down, there's a blank percent, and that would be 3.3. Okay. And just to be sure that anything above 3.3, then it would automatically be a no? Correct. But like I said, I think we've, two things I can say about that. One, I think we've built, you know, <coughs> we've built some cushion in there. And second, we will continue to watch the market between now and you have another meeting on May 6th, and if something happens, we can come back and talk to you on May 6th and say, we need to fine tune this a little. So we would have a second opportunity. If we, hopefully we, we shouldn't need it, but if we did, we would have a second opportunity to adjust it. Okay. Have a motion to second. Uh, it's a roll call vote. Chad? Aye. Rich? Aye. Tom? Aye. Stacy. Aye. Aye. Dan. Aye. Lee. Aye. Carry seven zero. Do I have a motion to accept the facilities bond series twenty thirteen Bravo? So moved. By Dan. Second. Second. By Chad. Questions on this one? This is the one that will be three point three zero. Mm-hmm. Correct. Right. Any questions? <laughs> Having a motion to second? Chad? Aye. Rich? Aye. Tom? Aye. Stacy? Aye. Aye. Dan? Aye. We? Aye. Carry 7 0. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Thanks. Drive you very safe. Much. Yes. Um, we have a uh, important announcement uh, of an award we received today. Sue Yes. Um, I'd like to invite Amy Hetnan and Caroline Warner, did you want to come up also and represent each other's bond? Today is Arbor Day. I know you might not believe that when you look outside this evening because it's <laughs> snowing again, but it is Arbor Day and uh, we were waiting very anxiously for this day to come, uh, knowing that our school, our school, elementary school, Jeffers Pond, and our entire district were up for awards from um, the Department of Education. And uh, we waited patiently, and this morning we received very good news that Jeffers Pond has been named a National Green School Award. And our school district, Prior Lake Savage Area Schools, has received the uh, District Sustainability Award uh, by the federal government. And we're very, very excited. And Amy um, helped write, or chaired writing that, and um, Caroline is here as a participant of that, a helper in writing that, and also both of them representing a team of people that, that participated in this process. So, Amy? Good evening, Chair Sorensen, members of the board, and Dr. Groover. Um, as Dr. Groover said, my name is Amy Katnin, and I'm the curriculum coordinator for the Prior Lake Savage Area Schools. Um, our application for the Green Ribbon Schools recognition began back in November um, with a comprehensive application that was aimed at drawing out our achievement and progress in three areas. One, reducing environmental impacts and costs. Two, improving the health and wellness of students and staff. And three, providing effective environmental and sustainability education, incorporating STEM, civic skills, and green career pathways. An outstanding team of Prior Lake Savage Area Schools staff members assembled to complete the initial application. 
I would like to thank the following staff members for their time, efforts, and enthusiasm towards the completion of both the Jeffers Pond Elementary School and the Prior Lake Savage Area Schools district applications. Jim Delwo, Sherry Bruner, Paul Haddon, Daryl Borchard, Jean Winters, Melissa Canettle, Caroline Warner, Sarah Aker, Leanne Weichel, Kay Dickey, and Lindsay Comstock. These individuals shared their knowledge and ex expertise of Prior Lake Savage Area Schools culture and practices in, mul in multiple areas, such as K-12 curriculum and environmental education programming, transportation, energy usage, food and nutrition, and the health and wellness of staff and students. At the end of January, we learned that both of our applications were finalists for state recognition. Essays highlighting our environmental education curriculum, sustainability practices, outdoor learning spaces and community partnerships were submitted to the Minnesota Department of Education. We were deeply proud to learn of this national recognition this morning. As the acting administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency said during the press conference, we recognize the Green Ribbon Schools for their remarkable efforts to create healthier learning spaces and educate students on the importance of environmental protection. The students who attend these schools are better prepared than ever to become the next generation of environmental stewards and bring about a healthier, more sustainable future. We believe this embodies the culture of the Prior Lake Savage Area Schools. Thank you. Thank you. Now the next step um, is that we will receive information uh, from the Department of Education about uh, an award ceremony that will take place in Washington, D.C. on June 3rd. So we're hoping to send a delegation there to receive that award, and we're looking forward to giving you more information when we have it. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Eric, we haven't held off. You're up. <laughs> hey, 20 minutes late, but he'll... It's all right, Kate's at Bernard, just playing basketball, so he needs the extra shooting anyway. He's going to be so happy. It's isn't it? Yeah. You're in trouble. You are in trouble. Chairman Swords and board members, Dr. Gruber, I'm going to um, give an update on winter sports. Uh, we're going to continue winter sports uh, through April, so uh, this won't be finalized, um, but we'll go from there. Um, funny story before I get started. Um, you know, in trying to schedule some spring sports, and some of you may have seen this in the paper, last Thursday uh, we scheduled a girls lacrosse game for the Savage Dome and a, and a baseball game for the Metrodome. Well, lo and behold, we had a snowstorm and we had to cancel both of our indoor games as well. So that's just kind of the way that all uh, about 360 ADs are feeling at this point. Um, as far as winter goes, we had an absolutely outstanding winter. Um, on the court, uh, in the classroom, on the stage, and everything. And I'm just going to kind of give you a, a quick overview of what happened and then, uh, and then some statistics. So wrestling, um, our wrestling team is absolutely phenomenal. Ended up second in the conference, uh, again to Apple Valley. And then um, a couple of the board members and Dr. Gruber got to watch us wrestle Apple Valley in the state tournament. Um, and even though we lost, we are making gains on Apple Valley. Um, two years ago, we lost to them 70 to nothing in the state semifinals. Last year, I believe it was 67 to 3. And this year, it was 39 16, I believe. And uh, they won eight matches. We won six. So I, I believe next year, we are going to get over that hump against Apple Valley. But another outstanding year for, for Coach Joe Block and, and the wrestling program. Alex Hart, Tanner Johnshaw, and Blake Carlisle, uh, also the next couple of days then, um, each, each won third place medals. Um, so that was awesome. Um, girls basketball, 9-18, 7-11, um, struggled throughout the year. Uh, we lost one, our top player, um, who's going to South Dakota State, tore her ACL about halfway through the year. Um, board member White and I were talking uh, at one point that, uh, you know, they actually played as hard as they possibly could, and, and it actually was the record isn't indicative of, of how well this team worked together. Um, boys basketball, another outstanding year for, for Coach Folke, 19 7, 13 and 5 in the conference. 
Um, tough loss in sections. We lost the opening round section game to Lakeville South. Um, one of the Lakeville South players basically caught lightning in a bottle, went 8 for 11 from behind the arc and uh, sealed our fate on that one. But uh, overall, a, a, an outstanding year. Girls hockey, um, we continue to struggle in that. Uh, 4 and 22. Um, this is uh, our coach. We've had uh, three coaches in the last five years, so um, Todd's working on, on building a program now. This will be his third year coming up, and, and hopefully we can uh, move forward with that. Um, boys hockey had an outstanding year. Uh, ended up 16-9, and 11-6 and six in the conference. Uh, unfortunately, lost third year in a row in, in, the, in the section semifinals. Um, lost to Burnsville, uh, which is an ouch. Uh, lost 2-1 to one, um, over at Braemar Arena. But... Uh, this is a program on the rise, and I and I, I think in the next year or so we'll uh, we'll see them at the XL Center very soon. Uh, boys swimming and diving, um, five and four in conference, fifth in sections, fourteenth uh, overall in state. Um, those are your state participants listed down there. A couple of the highlights of uh, state: Alex Janess and, and Marshall Heskin both placed, but we also broke a record for our two hundred. Uh, 200 free relay. Um, we broke a record that we had from 1994. So that was a, that was a pretty awesome job by, by those kids and an outstanding job in the state. Nordic Ski, um, and you'll see later on a slide, Kevin, Coach Kevin Panzer keeps getting more and more athletes out. And talk about a struggle. We look at all the snow we had now. Um, our home course is Murphy Hanrahan, and we haven't skied there the last two years. Um, we've had to go up to Anoka, um, to, to Elm Creek up there. We've had to go to um, Green Acres over in Lake Elmo, um, kind of by our neck of the woods at one time, Dr. Groover. Okay. Um, so we, we've had to travel everywhere just to try to, get, uh, try to get some skiing in. But those kids stick with it, and it's an absolutely outstanding program. Um, our cheer, uh, they were national qualifiers for the first time ever this year. Um, were able to travel down to Florida, which was uh, an awesome experience for them. They finished 21st down there, but um, but the cheerleaders, um, a tight knit group that uh, that really worked well together. Um, Dance line, you met a couple of those captains earlier today. Uh, this is a program that uh, a couple years ago I was looking at some old um, statistics. A couple years ago they finished. 14th in sections, 16th in sections. Well, they've really um, stepped it up. Uh, they were third in sections this year behind Eastview and, and Burnsville uh, and qualified for the state, state uh, dance meet for the first time ever. And uh, um, board member Ruel got to, uh, got to see a, a state dance competition, a little bit different than, than soccer, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> It, uh, it was awesome for those kids, and the sheer joy. Um, quick story for you, I was handing out the medals at, at the section meet, and, and one of the participants, as I was giving her her medal, just came up and gave me a big old bear hug, and it was just that sheer ju jubilation was awesome. Um, Knowledge Bowl, um, Andy Franklin and Brian Olson coached this team, and they keep getting kids out as well. Um, an awesome group of kids. The, they fared well, but uh, Chask and Chan has and have some, uh, some really good teams as well as St. Thomas. So we were sixth in the conference in the regular season, and the conference is uh, much broader than, than our 10 schools. And then they were ninth at the regionals, so, so didn't qualify um, for, the, uh, for the state, but still in a, a good year. Mock trial, um, Ms. Schaefer. Once again, we keep getting kids out, which is absolutely what we want with our activities. They were third in the SSC tournament, and then uh, they made it through three rounds of state. You have to, you have to go through six rounds of state in order to, to qualify um, for the finals. Uh, gymnastics, Annika was here tonight. Uh, they were section champions for the first time ever, and this was also just an awesome thing. I actually went from... I'm trying to think of what event I was at. Anyway, I walk into Lakeville North, and they're standing down there, and they see me, and they go, we're winning right now. <laughs> and it was, it was just this team, I use them as an example. 
Um, they started out the year, they scored 128 points, and I used that as we try to improve 1% every day. Um, their final score at the state then was 141.8 or something like that, and constant improvement uh, on their skills. So it was great to see them um, striving for success. Uh, one act play, another good show, third in the subsections. Um, robotics, we talked to them, talked about them a little bit. Uh, this program is continuing to continuing to grow. Uh, I talked to Mr. Olson today, who's going to sh help chaperone on the trip um, to St. Louis. They're ranked eighth in the world, uh, not just the state, but in the world. So we're talking thousands of robotics teams that are going to meet at uh, in St. Louis, and uh, and we're pretty high. Um, Joel Vaughn, the assistant, uh, one of the assistant coaches, sent out a video. Um, the game this year is is throwing frisbees um, into a small. What's the dimensions, Dave? I don't know, 18 inches. About like that. Yeah, about like that. <laughs> and this robot sitting in the corner, just going, choom, 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 and, and it, it wouldn't miss. So it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty cool to see. So they're doing really well. Um, speech team. Um, unfortunately, we didn't have anyone here tonight. Um, but uh, they were section runners up for the third year in a row. Lakeville North won the section. Uh, Lakeville North is a, has a, uh, a team that's, that's been really good for, for many years. Um, we had eight participants that went to state, um, and that was, that was last uh, Friday morning. Yeah. Um, so they, they braved the weather. They got up and, and hopped on a bus at 6.30 and drove up to Blaine. Uh, and then Aaron Boger won third in creative expression. Now, a little bit uh, about Aaron. Aaron was also starring in the play that night. So uh, Aaron was up all day, made it through the, the preliminary rounds, um, quarterfinals, semifinals, finals of state speech, and then had to get driven back to make the uh, opening curtain uh, for Harvey starting at 7 o'clock. Unfortunately, he didn't even get to to uh, go on stage and get his medal, but he was on stage as, uh, as, uh, as part of the play. So that was pretty, pretty cool. Um, spring play was Harvey. Hopefully you got to go out and see that. Um, Dave and I were talking earlier. One of the best performances that I've seen in my five years. Those kids were absolutely incredible. Um, and a very interesting story about an imaginary rabbit. But it was, it was a great performance by, by those kids. Um, band, um, Keith and uh, Justin are doing an amazing job of, of stepping up um, with the band. And these are just some of the, uh, the people that have made the all-state band. Um, so I put, put them on there. Um, as far as surveys goes, I've kind of switched it up a little bit, and I'll explain that. Um, in partnering with PLAY, we're, we're using a program called Positive Coaching Alliance, and it's really uh, to try to partner with the parents and uh, the volunteer coaches of PLAY and all of us, and, and trying to, you know, yeah, it's, it's about winning, but it's about uh, winning and, and life lessons as well. Um, so this survey kind of goes through um, some of those things that, that we're trying to teach with our kids about character and honor, as well as PLAY, and the idea is to try to make it a K-12 cohesiveness all the way from, you know, when they start out as little kids in T-ball or whatever, all the way up through the program. Um, so you'll see the questions. I put the questions on there so you can kind of have an idea. Um, one of the things that we try to teach is roots, which is rules, opponents, officials, teammates, and respect for oneself. So um, this is the parent side, and as you can see, uh, this is talking about the coach from the parent perspective. So obeying the rules, showing respect for officials, um, treating the players with respect, and then also treating the opponents with, with respect. And then um, the other the second part there is redefining winner. So emphasizing effort, learning, and improvement, which is learning from our mistakes. Um, and that's one of the vital things that, that we're trying to emphasize uh, within athletics and activities is it's okay to fail. Um, I did a uh, presentation to the um, ninth graders on Wednesday um, while uh, the sophomores and juniors were taking um, their MCA tests. And one of the little bits in there is, uh, is a piece by Michael Jordan. 
and it talks about how many times he failed so he could succeed. Um, and that's one of the things that we really try to um, emphasize. So um, within that then, rewarded effort, not just results, um, help players learn and improve, and then bounce back from mistakes. So, you know, every time a kid knows that he makes a mistake, but how do we help them to get better from that and not just, just chew them out? And then the last part is filling the emotional tank uh, with positive encouragements. Um, and then use the positive reinforcement, encourage players to do their best. Made sports fun. Every time we do a survey, why do you play sports or why are you in activities? It's because they want to have fun. And, and that's what I do when I talk to kids. And then, uh, you know, do our coaches listen to the players? And then the last, the last question that we had on there, would you like your student to play for this coach again? And, uh, you know, 85.5% said yes. I think that's a pretty positive statement right there. And then we did the same thing with, with our students, um, with honoring the game, obeying the rules. And this is, they're talking about their coach redefining as a winner filling the emotional tank, and then, and then would you like to play for this coach again? And we had 79%. So overall, I felt pretty good about, about the surveys. And, you know, a lot of times we always hear about the negative and we focus on the negative, but 95% of it's, 95 of it's positive. Um, just quickly going through some expenditures, and uh, this doesn't have, this is just uh, athletics. This does not have the activities on here. But I just wanted to, to briefly go through this. And we went through this a couple years ago. I don't think we talked about it last year. Um, so these are just some of the statistics and contributions that we've had um, within our athletic side. And, and this is fall um, cost per student. And that would be for uh, cost per student um, by the district. So um, those are just some numbers there in the fall. And I will, uh, um, I'll leave this on the desktop here. So. So we can send this out to you and you can look at it in more detail at some point. And then uh, winter expenditures on here. And these aren't quite finalized. We're still getting uh, one or two bills from the winter um, on that. <clears throat> and then lastly, the Challenge Cup. And uh, I wanted to put some, some of the past statistics on here so I look back. Um, Challenge Cup recognizes uh, athletics, fine arts, and activities. Um, and this is updated now. Um, up until the speech um, tournament, so we will get eight more points from Aaron um, receiving third place. But um, in 2003, when it first started, uh, they ranked them A and AA. Prior Lake was in, in AA at that time, so it, there was um, uh, about 200 schools altogether. Um, Prior Lake ranked 108th, 2004, 2005, 111th. Um, and then you can see there's a, there's a steady gain in 2009 and 10, then they switched to um, three levels. They switched to AAA, AA, and single A. Mm -hmm. So now there's 96 schools that we are compared to in this one. Um, so that gives you statistics up until last year. At this point, um, through our winter season, except for speech, uh, right now we are 19th out of 96 schools. So as you saw with our, with our kids up here, we're getting more kids to state individually um, and teams. So hopefully by honoring the game and doing the right things, um, we're also seeing results on the court in the, in the classroom um, for extracurricular activities. Any questions? I have one. Um, the uh, surveys, you said you had, had them all tallied up. Did you see much variation from sport to sport on those? You know, yes, there, there is absolutely. A lot of variation or? Uh, some, yes. Okay. Yeah. we. What we do is, is, um, is Martha compiles all the data and I have them per individual sport. So in my exit meetings, I talk about um, those specifically um, with the coaches. But this is what you're seeing is the, is the compilation of, of the entire data. But each, co each coach is talked to individually about, about strengths and weaknesses. And yep. Improve. Okay, thank you. And so this will be the new standard forward. Uh, the new survey? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. Could you um, talk to intramurals? Oh, I could talk about intramurals. Very good. Thank you. Since you know um, how important that is. Board member Shima. Yes. Um, we had a, a winter season of basketball this year, um, and uh, Russ Reeks takes the lead on that one. 
Um, and I'm 77, does that sound right? Mm -hmm. it's about 77 participants. Um, we had a, uh, a Monday night league, which was um, ninth and 10th grade, and it was basketball. Um, and then we had one female team uh, in that league, which was awesome because we're really trying to push that. And then on Wednesday nights, we had an 11th and 12th grade league. Um, and it was highly competitive and highly entertaining. Um, I think, talk about playing for the sheer enjoyment of it. These kids went out and played hard and, and had an absolutely outstanding time. Um, this spring then, we're looking at a, um, putting up a dome on the west field and maybe, no. Um, <laughs> um, we're going to uh, run a, a flag football league. Um, Mr. Reeks is putting out the feelers right now on that one. So then we'll have volleyball in the fall, um, basketball in the winter, and then um, flag football in the spring. And that will be co-ed as well. Um, so we're just getting the finishing touches on that. That will start June 1st? Yeah, <laughs> be right after graduation. Yeah. Well, my understanding is there are students that come and watch those games. So, oh, yeah. So you're getting more people participating the, in the stands. The well. students not only come and watch, they, a lot of the teams have student coaches. Um, and it's, it's very entertaining, to <laughs> say the least. Any other questions? You'll make sure we get, can we get a copy of this presentation? Yeah, it's on, and it's on, on the desktop right now, so I think you guys could probably send it to them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Good job. Preliminary budget with Ms. Sink. Hey. Um, before I begin, I also have um, some excellent news for our department and for our school district. Um, the district once again received word last week that we have received a certificate of excellence from the Association of School Business Officials, ASBO. Um, this is the fourth year in a row that the district has received this award. It is um, considered a very prestigious award because there's not a lot of districts in the state that receive it, nor in the nation. And so um, we are very fortunate that we um, did receive it once again this year. So I'm very proud of the staff in my office and all the contribution that they do during the audit to be able to complete all the requirements for this award and so we're able to receive it once again this year. Congratulations. Um, just uh, we go through this um, quite a bit um, as we go through the budget process, um, talking about our strategic roadmap, our enrollment projections, revenue and expenditure assumptions, and all those considerations for um, future expenditures. Um, going through all of our core values that drive our budget, um, our partnership, innovation, respect, wise stewardship, accountability, and strive for excellence. Um, just talking about our enrollment, again, we're still at increasing of 87 students for 2013 and 14. We budget 485 kindergarten students for um, next year. We may want to look at changing that because we do have some excellent um, news when it comes to kindergarten. I have a slide about that a little bit later. As you can see, this is our enrollment projection. This hasn't changed since when we um, um, started this process. We did get these numbers as we went through the demographic study. Currently, well, as of last Wednesday anyway, our enrollment was 462 kindergarten students for next year. Um, and like I said, we're budgeting 485. So we're well on our way and probably will exceed that number. And so one of the things that we'll want to look at as it gets closer to the final budget is do we want to, do we want to change that number and um, slide it up a little bit as we move forward. Last year at this same time, our kindergarten enrollment was 450. So it's a nice um, indicator to know that we are definitely on track to reach our goal. Um, revenue assumptions, um, we're assuming 1% on the formula of $52. That will bring us an additional $440,000. 
And then we also will receive some additional revenue due to the growth in our enrollment, those 87 students. That's $566,500. We also anticipate an increase in special ed funding of about 276000 And then after the board meeting, the board approved QCOMP. Um, we will receive additional cube comp funding, um, $1.2 million. We also have set aside $650,000 in our current budget to help um, implement that for next year. For our expenditure assumptions, again, our, we um, anticipate current staffing expenditures, our technology lease that was approved last year, the data warehouse, which was approved by the board in the past, staff development at 2%. Um, 244,000. Um, we have Wolfridge funding for 45,000. Adaptive sports at the high school for 20,000. Um, contract negotiation costs are in the budget. Um, concurrent college enrollment costs um, at the Prior Lake High School for 30,000. And then again, the QCOP expenditures of $1.8 million. So that has been updated again, our expenditures for QCOP. Um, we the approved expenditures as a three four is the staffing to meet class size targets. Um, elementary staffing, um, 2.4 FTE was added, and middle school staffing to um, meet our current class size targets, we added um, 0.43 FTE, and then the increase of Prior Lakes um, High School staffing, one, we've 1.0 FTE. We've done this already, and I just wanted to remind you of those that process. And then we also are looking at staffing for class size reduction. And, and on March 4th, we increased our Prior Lake High School staffing 1.2 FTE. So these things have already been done. We've already um, worked on meeting class size targets and increasing some um, a little bit. And then other staffing that has been included, again, uh, special ed, um, talked a little bit about that earlier of those job descriptions, those special ed positions, and then the operation support for construction and the data assessment coordinator. Um, <coughs> expenditures for um, discussion and consideration. Um, we have the class size reduction. If we want to further um, have some additional cl um, class size reduction in our middle school and our elementary, the cost, as we know, is $62,500 per FTE. And then we have some additional technology needs that need to be considered at, um, for the future. <coughs> for class size reduction, um, the proposed additional staffing for class size reduction, we came to the board for a middle school proposal of 3.6 FTE. There was an additional request of a 0.4 FTE and in your packet you received a letter from the middle school principals discussing her advocating for that additional 0.4. So the total proposed cost would be $250,000. Um, um, and then for the elementary school, we do have a potential um, future proposal that we're not bringing forward at this time. But um, when we see the enrollment start to increase at the elementary, we know that we would like to bring forward a proposal for 2.4 FTE at that time for an additional cost of $150,000. Now these dollars would come from our assigned category for class size reduction. In the area of technology, I know that our technology coordinator, Marcus Malazzo, has brought forward those essential conditions that we have talked about in the past. These also, these costs have not um, been included um, as part of our ongoing expenditures and we'd like that discussed at a future board meeting also in the work session. Um, we have the um, SIS for $60,000 of implementation and, uh, and the ongoing cost is either neutral or reduced. We currently have an SIS program but for one year <coughs> we would cross over and so we would have that in additional expenditure just for one year. And that's the student information system. Student information system, sorry. Um, the website redesign for $60,000, um, we do have part of that already in our budget. Um, I just wanted an update on that. Safari Montage um, is $62,500. That's an ongoing cost. We haven't um, had that determination yet of what that <coughs> continuation would be. 
Schoolology is $58,400 per year. So that's an implementation and an ongoing cost. And of course we have the Google, Google Apps for Education and we want to make sure we have that out there because it's $12. <laughs> so, but we are utilizing that program also. <coughs> these, these areas of technology, we will be coming back to the board um, for discussion and uh, do we want, uh, when do we want to implement these items into our budget for um, moving forward with our technology program. And here is our 2013-14 budget. It's been <coughs> updated somewhat. If you look at the first line for our unassigned operating in the revenues and expenditures, those increases for um, QCOMP have been increased in those two areas for revenues and expenditures. And if, you, and if you also look down a few lines for the assigned for class size reduction, you can see that we moved a million dollars out of our cash flow. Um, we are now receiving the shift has been reduced, so we're now see receiving those funds. So we felt it was prudent that we move those dollars out of there. Um, they're no longer needed for the cash flow um, for cash flow due to the shift, and so we moved them into that class size reduction, that million dollars. And so those areas that I talked about um, a few slides ago for the middle school and the elementary class size reduction would come from the line that's for the assigned class size reduction. Any questions about this? Yes. Um, the, the additions to the budget for the for the additional staff bills are sustainable year to year, or or the class size reduction. Yes. Those would be for three years. Three years, okay. And then the other one, you said that you might be coming back to us for an uh, increase in elementary level. Right. That would also come out of that same. But wouldn't there also be additional funding because of more students? Right now, what's interesting and when we look back over the course of the last couple of years, what we've tried to do is really take a look, good look at when our students come into our district. And so right now we're a little short in our elementary numbers, which is why we're not coming to you right now for um, those additional um, teaching FTE because we don't, we're not seeing those numbers right now. But interesting enough, they come from the end of April through the middle of June. And so we should start seeing those numbers start to increase really quickly now. And I think they're not happening because of the snow that's happening outside. Mm -hmm. it's typically they're just not um, coming in and it's, it's just a little slow this year, but I do attribute that so much to the weather. As soon as it gets nice, we see, start to see those parents come in with those children and, and we see that enrollment start to grow. But that's why we're not having come to you yet. We want to make sure that we see those numbers. They're in our district. They're enrolled, and then we'll come to you asking for those additional FTE. All right, one more question: What is Safari Montage? I am going to um, let our assistant superintendent discuss that. <laughs> <laughs> Safari Montage is an online curriculum repository where teachers can use it to uh, get the content that they can live stream smart board to students in the lesson classroom. Okay. So it, it is a curriculum resource that would be used uh, E12 in our district should we move forward with this. We do have uh, several committees that are piloting Schoology, which is uh, uh, Safari Montage, which is that online curriculum repository, but also Schoology, which is an online management content, or being able to manage curriculum and communication with students uh, through Um, is that, are we currently using Moodle? I mean, have we used Moodle for yeah. that? So this would be in this replacement? Would be, this would replace Moodle and uh, would offer teachers and students and parents uh, quite a few more amenities than what we just used for Moodle. But if you're familiar with Moodle, it's mm -hmm. pretty much along the same lines. Okay. Other questions? And just a quick update as long as I'm up here talking about budgets. I have um, received some information about the omnibus bills. Um, at, at the House level, we do have, um, they're proposing a 2% in the first year and a 2% the second year on the basic formula. And also in addition to that, funding for all day, everyday kindergarten in the second year. And however, the Senate side gives us 1% the first year and nothing in the second year. 
they're showing a $400 increase on the basic formula, but what they do is they adjust the weighting factor for our students and lower that. So in essence, it's a wash. And so even though it looks like we're getting a lot more money on the basic formula, it doesn't bring any, in any new dollars to the district. And, and they are also proposing all day everyday kindergarten in the second year. So I feel very comfortable with what um, we've brought forward. It's in the middle of the road between the governor's proposal and the House and the Senate proposals. And so we're hopefully we're a little conservative and we'll see some additional funding come in. But this time I do feel very comfortable with what we've proposed so far. Further questions? Thank you. Uh, additional staff requests for 2013-14. Yes, and now before you've got an additional staff request, this was mentioned in Julie's budget presentation. So this is the four FTE um, addition to the middle level that she discussed. And looking at the impact of the four additional FTE there, um, we had asked for Dan Edwards and Sasha to set up to look at what, what would the impact be on those high class size So what would that look like with, with additional FT? And the four FT, if you take those peaks from 37 to 39 and reduce that down to 33 to 34 students. And let me just uh, make sure that we're clear that those are the peaks there as they currently exist and as they would exist. The averages are going to be uh, lower than that in the low 30s. And, uh, and we certainly have average middle school classes below the 33 to 34. But that's that impact that they highest class sizes to really try to eliminate those situations at the middle level where you're starting to approach 40 um, you know and kids just don't have that same classroom experience so that's the impact that this FT could have and um, as we're looking at it you know it's looking like we're on on track for the students um, showing up in September do you have a motion to accept the additional Staffing for the 2013 2014 school year for the most so moves by Dan. Second, second by Lee. Questions? That's not a roll call. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? That carries 7 0. Our middle, can we make it? Sure. <clears throat> Um, this is just great news for our middle school students, um, and thank you to our board for accepting this proposal. Um, our, uh, since we've moved to the six-period day, we've been trying to wrestle with getting those class sizes to be friendly on both sides of the street, and uh, it's been really difficult, and I think we've, we've hit uh, an area now where we know that with your support, we can really reduce those numbers and provide a better learning environment for students. I've been in some of those classrooms. I've been in Allison Zach's classroom just recently uh, when she had um, 38 students. And she had them moving around, which was absolutely amazing to me. Um, but amid all the desks and moving things around, it was difficult to do. And it uh, gives me a real appreciation for what this, these dollars can do to really reduce class sizes at our middle schools. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Add this change the delivery system. Doug. Good evening. Mr. Sorensen, Dr. Gruber, members of the board. This proposal that's part of the packet was um, the same proposal that was presented at board workshop earlier and I'm seeking approval for moving forward with this for next school year. As you remember, we carried out an intervention study and uh, what we're looking at is revamping how we're delivering our interventions via the ADSYS program. Uh, up until now, we've been working with a lot of teachers carrying out the interventions, being supported by paras. This would consolidate those teachers uh, into basically 6.5 teachers uh, with a teacher in each elementary building with, that would be able to deliver the ADSYS services and it would improve our consistency of delivering the services, our fidelity of delivering the services, the communication, this group of teachers would meet monthly to review all the ADSYS services and they would meet with the RTI coordinator uh, that would carry this, uh, that would facilitate those monthly meetings. And so uh, overall we think this would be an improvement with our ADSYS delivery program. 
and we're seeking your approval and would certainly open it to any questions that you might have. Do I have a motion to accept the as is delivery change for the next school year? Make them by Tom. Second. Second by Dan. Any questions? I know we talk about this at the uh, mm -hmm. study session. And Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries 7 0. Thank you. Thank you. This is Superintendent Holberg with the Curriculum Instruction Assessment Department Restructure. Yeah. Good evening, <laughs> Chair Sorensen, uh, members of the board, Dr. Gruber. In your board packet is a memo that outlines a department restructure for curriculum department as well as the professional development department. Um, there are several initiatives that have come through the board, uh, but most of, probably most recently and very visible has been the data warehouse, uh, QCOM, and then just the intervention study that you just heard from uh, Dr. Kern. And all of those uh, recommendations from those study committees are about best practice and providing a new way of supporting our teachers and providing increased support to our students in our district. And as a result, it does have a subsequent impact on how we currently provide support to teachers and support for students. And as a result of all those studies, I am proposing a restructure that, that aligns uh, the curriculum department as well as the professional development department that aligns to the uh, data warehouse, QCOMP, and uh, intervention study initiatives, maximizes the current resources that we have as a district, and provides additional efficiencies and ultimately providing better support to our teachers and increased service to our students. There are two things I do want to point out to you. Um, there is no additional funding request as part of this restructure. And second, second of all, everyone who is impacted by this restructure will continue to have a position within the school district. On the second page of the memo, um, I do have a couple columns uh, that kind of articulate what the department looks like this year in 2012 and 13, as well uh, as part of the restructure, what it would look like in 2013, 2014. The one thing I do want to point out is in 2013, 14, as part of this restructure, our district, I, I am recommending the, uh, the title grant oversight and title program be wrapped into the curriculum coordinator position and as a result as recommended to be a 12 month uh, administrative position. But we would be using title dollars, title funds to fund the rest of that position to make that a 12 month position. Um, and then the administrative part with the oversight of the grant. With that, I am seeking <coughs> Or any questions that you have? Do I have a motion to accept the department restructuring? So moved. By Dan? Second. Second. By Tom. Questions? Uh, one question. Does this still make sense even if QCOMP doesn't, after all, go in? The restructuring? The As far as with, uh, with QCOMP, it, I, it still does make sense. I mean, these are things that we're providing support to our staff. Um, you know, the biggest thing here is with the data assessment coordinator, uh, that, that makes sense, as well as with the title um, grant component being wrapped into the curriculum coordinator. Uh, this is still a recommendation coming forward with QCOM. That is a professional development for our teachers where they're getting the peer coaching uh, and support they need within the classroom level. Um, you know, pending QCOM, I mean, like, Mr. Mons and I have mentioned a couple times we fully anticipate that that is something we would move forward with and the state would approve our plan. Um, but, I, you know, I, I, that this is a recommendation that I would propose in light of QCOMP or not for the district. Yeah, the one point that I just make is that um, absolutely none of these positions are funded through QCOMP uh, at all. <coughs> Um, this is a, a recommendation that has been long talked about. <laughs> we've talked about the need within the department uh, as we've taken in uh, technology, <clears throat> curriculum instruction and assessment to really look at how we're providing services um, and uh, making sure that our professional development is a strong component of that, but we're also looking at the variety of different uh, roles that we're now being asked of, uh, this department to take, including our data warehouse. Um, and the variety of positions that are here. So uh, I believe that this is a strong 
recommendation that will uh, support the district for many years to come. Other questions? I have another question. Sure. Have a question. Um, Jeff, it says Tosa under a number of these positions. Um, and that implies to me that it's not a very permanent position or that it could change. Could you explain why you're going with the TOSA or what you mean by that? Uh, TOSA means teacher on special assignment. Mm -hmm. And these are positions that uh, historically have been TOSA based positions where we, you know, their teachers are typically a nine month uh, or 185 day contract. And so uh, moving forward, many of these positions will remain as TOSAs you know, within, um, you know, the teacher on special assignment. Uh, one of the things that when you look at a TOSA position, that's typically considered short term, mm -hmm. you know, you know, they're, t you're, they're classroom teachers that, uh, you know, through these positions, these are leadership positions. So th they may be applying or seeking that opportunity. You know, they may be out of the classroom, but then after a couple of years, they would go back into the classroom as well. So they, they are intended to be short-term position, but leadership opportunities within the district for our teachers. So are you saying they would switch to a different person? They could, yes. Okay. I mean, I like the idea of your restructuring. Um, I think it, it needs, it gives it more focus and it keeps everything kind of all under one roof, so to speak, and makes all the puzzle pieces work together. Um, I was just con confused about the Tulsa, because to me it seems that it should be more of a permanent position than but maybe you're talking it is a permanent position, but maybe not that person is permanent? Correct. Okay. Correct. Was there um, feedback from the actual staff currently to form this? Or, I mean, were they consulted as to? With the data warehouse, there was a strong sentiment that we really needed somebody with that, with that uh, tool coming into the district that who was going to take that on and presently looking at the department there was a void there so that factored into it. we had a committee that was recognizing that as part of the process with QCOMP we were also looking at that professional development support that was happening and recognizing that through QCOMP staff would be getting a better uh, professional development through that peer coach model and so that was something that you know in our current structure that was done by our, one of our TOSAs or a couple or our two district staff development doses, that that may not necessarily be a need, you know, moving forward pending QCOM. And so there were several feedback channels uh, through just different, the initiatives, as well as the staff that would uh, move forward and making sure that these initiatives were successful. Further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries 7-0. Uh, targeted services update, Dr. Kern. In your packet, you will see a uh, proposal for targeted services programs for the summer. And uh, as in past summers, we would like to offer these services for uh, kids who qualify as per the state of Minnesota guidelines for at-risk programs. Uh, these are uh, kids, these are, this proposal is cost neutral. Uh, the staff would be funded uh, via student attendance that generates the revenue from the state of Minnesota. So there would be no cost to these programs, but they are similar to the programs that we have offered in the past in the summer. And this kind of gives you a brief outline of what uh, the calendar looks like for these programs. So I'm seeking your approval to move ahead with these programs uh, for the summer school offerings. Do I have a motion to accept the targeted services summer programs? By Tom? Second by Stacy. Um, questions? Just a quick SOAR. SOAR is an acronym used at Twin Oaks. Okay. <laughs> it was called the STARS program it previously. It previously was the STARS at risk program. Oh, okay. Now, with the closing of some of the schools, we've adjusted attendance. I know Five Hawks is going to have some issues this summer. Yep, yep, and that's why we're combining some combining. elementary offerings. Are we required any busing or anything for some of those students? Some of them are offering busing, but again, that is being funded through the student attendance, so it is uh, being offered within, and they're being able to stay within budget as a cost neutral component. Okay. And then uh, Hidden Oaks, Twin Oaks, 
those are they alternate years as to where they house their programs okay good further questions all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed aye. carry six seven zero thank you, thank you. Uh, bid schedule for roof replacement mr dell good evening chair Stonson. excuse me school board dr groover i have before you a schedule for the um, uh, roof project at the dsc um, bids are out in the paper this week the 20th and they'll run next week on the 27th we'll have a mandatory uh pre-bid meeting here at the DSC on the 29th of April uh, bids will be due on Monday May 6th we'll have a bid opening which uh, is also a, a school board meeting so there'll be no uh, advance on that I apologize the timing is um, very tight for this uh, but that's an update on the roof project Um, moving on to the bid award approval for the uh, 2013 phase one building improvements. Uh, also, in front of you, you have the bid tabulation of the projects um, for construction at Hidden Oaks, Five Oaks, and Westwood. Uh, parent low bidders are General Contractor McFarland Construction, Fire Protection, and Summit Fire Protection. Uh, ventilation uh, HVAC equipment is uh, McDowell Company. Test and balance is the um, balancer. Electric went to Phaser Electric. Um, and the automation went to Siemens for Westwood and Five Ox and Yule Automation for Hidden Oaks. Um, we had zero bids for uh, piping for um, Hidden Oaks. And so uh, we re requesting permission to pull back um, the bids for piping at Five Watts and Westwood and rebid all piping projects for construction this summer. And that will still leave us on schedule? Uh, the, the schedule is very tight. And that's the speculation is why we didn't get bids for hidden notes. This is a very tight schedule. But we'll work with the contractors and I'm cautiously optimistic. Do I have a motion to accept the uh, bids as Jim uh, outlined? So moved. By Dan? Second. Second. By Tom? Questions? I have a question for the, for the piping, uh, the different ones you're going to rebid it. Um, is there a possibility if, we, if the bids do not come in very favorable that some of this could be delayed a year? Or uh, it's it's integral to the project. No. Nexus have any ideas for us? Um, I guess one of the ideas is to talk to contractors, let them know that we possibly could be in the mechanical spaces September, early October. Um, as it appeared in the bidding documents, everybody had to be out in August. We can work with them on that. Okay. Is this due in part to the lightness of getting the approval from MDE on the uh, bid review and comment? That's correct. That's a big part of this. Further questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries 7 0. Uh, superintendent review process is mine. Um, according to our board policy, uh, we'll have a survey link go out to the board members. Um, for the review of the uh, superintendent's goals for 2012-13. Um, with that, we'll take those. Uh, it's open for about a week and a half, I believe, to tabulate those. Martha, is that correct? A week and a half? It's in, it's in the packet. Yeah. And uh, with that, uh, we'll work on her evaluation and get back to you with that. Um, are there any comments or questions about that? It's similar to the policy of, uh, that we have followed in the past. Okay. And there is a timeline in your board packet to, for that. 
And administrators get to comment as well as the board. Yes. Any questions on the timeline? Okay. Any other further questions about that? Sure. Um, before you, um, you have a copy of our strategic framework um, and also um, a list of my goals for the year 2012-13. Um, there is one type on your copy on the right-hand column. It says 11-12 for some reason, and I apologize for that. Um, but uh, what I've done is I've highlighted all of those uh, components of the goals that I feel have completed to date, although it's still April 22nd. There's still work to be done. This year is not over. And then in blue underneath the, each of those uh, statements, I have um, indicated areas where I think we are excelling or comments that I want you to be sure to, to know or, or something that has to do with the completion of that goal by the end of the year. Um, but to highlight, there are three different columns. Um, the first column is our sustaining work, and my sustaining work as a superintendent, and that's you know carrying out our vision, our mission, our values and belief statements, and uh, setting forth our strategic roadmap. And I'm very proud this is our fifth year of this strategic roadmap, that we haven't changed our, our direction or our goals. And uh, when I think about all the reports that have been given tonight and the actions that have been taken, they certainly speak to our commitment to our vision and our mission, and uh, to see the environmental education work that we've been, that's been happening in this district since Jim Hughes was in the classroom. We were trying to count back how many years ago that was, but we know it was more than 12. And to see tonight to have national recognition for our environmental education work, both at the school and at the district level, is just outstanding. And I know for this particular uh, work that, that we're, each of us are standing on the shoulders of, of very important people that along with Jim Hughes really made this happen and helped create that framework and groundwork for us. And, and I've mentioned them before, but I will mention them again. Dr. Tom Westerhouse, my predecessor, <coughs> Kara Rickenberg, um, who was the environmental education coordinator, um, Jim Hughes, as well as um, Paul Oberg and the entire Jeffers Foundation, um, who has supported us as we begin to grow our environmental education program. And uh, each of the administrators and all, um, Cindy Solberg was a, a elementary principal at Jeffers Pond when it was built and certainly is, is one of the administrators that, that really had an impact on us. And then all of our other administrators that are with us today in, in the past. Um, that, that really makes me proud because I know we're building together. It isn't a stop and start. It's an adding on to and continuing the good work. So I'm very excited about the work that we've been doing. Um, and um, the work that, that is in the middle column is our implementation work, and that's the work that, that is ongoing, that we're really into the middle of. And you could see that tonight, too, as we're talking about the restructuring of, of, of uh, the curriculum department, as we're talking about what we're going to do with the budget and that ongoing conversation and dialogue about the dollars that you want to put aside to make sure that we're lowering class size, not just maintaining them, but lowering them specifically at that secondary level. That's good work that we're doing now. And we can do that because we have a positive fund balance. We're using those dollars wisely. We're being good stewards of the money that our community has invested in our, in our, our public school system. And because of that, we're able to say, step back and say, what is it that we really is of highest importance to you as a board, to me as an administrator, and to our district? And it really has been to reduce class size and to make sure that, number one, our students are getting the very best education they possibly can. So um, I'm very proud of the work that we've been able to accomplish. Certainly in our first, my first few years here, we were still digging out. We were cutting, we were reducing, we were looking for ways to reformat our systems in place so that we could be in this place today. And I know, Dan, when I look at you and think about the years that you were on the board prior to this time, I was back in a time when we were in the red. And, and Lee, you remember that also, and probably Tom does as well. Um, that, that we didn't think we'd ever get to our fund balance. And here we are, you know, right at the, that top, talking about changing our fund balance even, our, our levels of it. That's um, uh, an unbelievable accomplishment of our school board and of our district to look carefully and with scrutiny to make sure that we have a model that we can sustain over time. 
and we've done that and in so doing we've also had opportunities and taking those opportunities and using them wisely has allowed us this tonight to reduce our middle schools uh, class size for next year and get those peaks down um, and that's really good work I'm very proud of all of the work that everyone is doing together but particularly proud to be the superintendent today and in this role to see that the good work that we've done um, on my goals, um, you know, one of them is marketing our district to attract and, re attract and retain our elementary students um, and knowing that our kindergarten numbers are higher this year at this date than they were last year at this date is very encouraging. Uh, we know that our community is very much into social media and uh, adding Ashley Franks to work with Christy and with Marcus has certainly been a huge advantage to us this year. We're able to get our information, whether it's a school closing, which we're not talking about tonight, of course, <laughs> um, or a late start, which we're not talking about tonight, um, because we're in a dark room with no windows, so we can talk about that. Um, we can get that information out on Twitter and on Facebook, on our listserv, through our phone call systems, and get information out to our families almost instantaneously. Uh, it takes more time to get it done than it does for it to go out, and that's the way we want it to be. We want to continue to be able to reach our community in ways that they need to be reached in, the ways that they access media. So accessing social media will continue to be a huge um, uh, predominant way that we get to our community and make sure that our parents are aware of what's going on within our, our school district and within our community. Um, of certainly having the ASBO Award tonight, the um, uh, along with the MDE award again for the fourth year in a row is a certainly um, uh, very good news for us and, and Julie's department the business department has worked very hard to make sure that we uh, uh, achieve that award every year working through the audit to make sure that every component of it fits within the parameters needed to be um, awarded this uh, uh, award of excellence so that's exciting um, and developing this long-range plan of making making sure that our facility needs are being met this is something we've talked about for four and a half years really that I've been here and I know for four and a half years before that because we have new buildings and we have older buildings and the older buildings need to have uh, the care and attention so that they can remain by vi vibrant schools for us in the future and we've been able to do that this year by working with uh, this uh, with Nexus in order to develop a plan and then to execute that plan so beginning in December with the approval uh, of the, by the school board uh, of the $25 million to uh, be able to use lease levy dollars to be able to sustain that work. You heard from Jim tonight that they're, they've been going out for bid now and getting the projects underway. I know the roof in this building is um, under repair as we speak. Um, it's not going to look really pretty for a while. Uh, or may, may never look really pretty, um, but it, at least it will be functional and will not have a roof that leaks and we'll be able to have um, a heating system within the building that actually works and uh, staff members will not have to wear gloves while they type. So that will be all really good news here, uh, but throughout our district and our older buildings, we're beginning to meet those needs and that's exciting work as we move forward. Um, <clears throat> And now, now we're also talking about that making those additions to the high school using lease levy funds so that we can uh, provide a space for our students that is workable for them. You've heard many times, and I've talked about that many times, uh, about the high school as we move forward. Um, and then increasing student achievement is always number one as far as we're moving forward and the good work that we're doing there, uh, certainly you can see in the pages that are attached to this report and then the East STEM, of course, I've already talked about, and um, um, creating the conditions necessary for 21st century learning skills. Uh, this has been a big year for our staff. Um, each of them have received, each of our certified staff members have received a com new computer. They have been refreshed. 950 computers were installed last summer. Uh, we are completing our smart board implementation in June with our music rooms at the high school. have been our last rooms that, that have been designated as smart board rooms. Um, those are really tricky and they've had to wait until the very end because they needed very specific and um, inter, inter, uh, um, complicated 
let me say, complicated systems in order to be uh, vi viable for them to use. It was either do it right or don't do it. So we've waited to do them last because we needed to save uh, the dollars put aside for that. So we were be able to finish up the smart boards. We have Wi-Fi access now throughout all of our buildings um, and our data warehouse was approved uh, and purchased and uh, beginning work actually this week with ties on that uh, transfer over of record, records as we begin that process. And we chose a new website vendor um, just recently and that will be ready by the fall and Christy is working very hard on that with Marcus and Ashley to make sure that that's up and ready for, for our staff when they come back. Uh, and then as we work through the uh, summer months, you've heard about Schoology and uh, Safari Montage and the student information systems. Those will be the last three components of that, uh, that, that whole package of essential conditions for us to have as a district for teachers to really be able to access um, um, to computer technology for their classroom in new and exciting ways. So we're very excited about bringing those conditions uh, to our staff and to our students. And then the final one is really um, uh, maintaining that culture of respect and rapport within our school district and our community. And uh, you've heard before about our decision resources survey and the high regard that our community has for our schools. Uh, you know, 95% of our, uh, those that were communicated with said that they believe our schools are either good or excellent. And that's up um, over just two years ago is up 9%. So in each of the categories, whether it's the school board, uh, the administration, uh, the teachers, every area of our school district, the, the, the response has been more positive in this specific um, survey than it was two years ago. The, the percentage of um, community members that truly believe that our, we are doing an excellent job has increased. So that's very important to us as we move forward, making sure that we're meeting the needs of our, our community as we move into the uh, 21st century even further. Um, and each of the goal areas are all related to the um, strategic directions and each of them have different goals that are set underneath there. Um, so you can see that we're, we're continuing our work. If there are things on here that haven't been completed, I have goals for them to be completed. There are just a few exceptions uh, that will delay until next year. And one of them is to study whether or not we should bring second grade into the SAGE Academy. And uh, it's, it's been a, a conversation about what that assessment is and, and have we found the right one. And to date, we have not found the right assessment. Uh, to be able to have reliable data. And that's the only reason that we, that has held up that decision whether or not to take that a grade lower. Um, it, it's a complicated, again, uh, decision to make. We want to make a right one, so we're holding off until we have better uh, information. Um, and the last one is the immersion concept. Um, Mr. Holmberg is going to be starting um, that um, study in June and beginning to work on that through this next year. Um, and talk about, with our community about what kinds of immersion opportunities they would like, best like to see as we move forward um, into 2013-14, ready for 14-15. So those are two of the goals that uh, you know are, are delayed a bit, um, partly because we have a lot on our plate, partly because of the SAGE um, um, wanting to have the right assessment and wanting to make sure that we're making the decision based on the right criteria. So other than that, uh, you're certainly welcome to call me with any questions you might have. <coughs> I can ask them tonight. Okay. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> uh, moving on to policy. We have the uh, second final reading of policy 501 weapons. Yes, we do. Um, do you want me to start? You, yeah, you can. Um, this uh, policy is we've had many conversations about um, they uh, we've reviewed it with you uh, both um, here and at our study sessions um, and we've made minimal changes here um, except for on the third page of the document under F um, where it's it will we'll read with the adoption possession of a dangerous weapon BB gun or a replica firearm with the written permission of the superintendent or designee. Um, and that is one of the um, uh, 
shall not be considered a violation of this policy if a non-student falls within one of these following categories. So um, we're being very stringent on this and making sure that uh, that if an example of a, a replica of a firearm is brought, that there is written permission ahead of time and that that is, doesn't, isn't something that would happen on a daily basis. And then on G, we're taking out that entire um, sentence. And other than that, there are no other changes. Any questions about this policy, comments? I have a motion to accept the revised policy of 501 weapons. I'll make the motion. By Lee. Second. Second by Dan. <laughs> Questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carry 7 0. Superintendent's report. Okay, I'll try to make this short. I've been um, talking a bit here. I'll keep, I'll take out of my report what I've already mentioned so that I'm not being redundant. On the back page of your packet is the uh, open enrollment application data for 1314. These are the numbers that we have to date. And you can see that we have 144 students that have applied and been granted um, open enrollment status for the coming year. Most of those numbers are in our kindergarten numbers. That's 87 which is similar to last year, we had 90 total. This indicates that we'll probably exceed that number, certainly, for the coming year. Um, I wanted you to have that. Um, second of all, I wanted you to know that we had a district crisis response team um, meeting here last week with our administrative team, our county and city police, and emergency responders to practice tabletop exercises in a lockdown drill. Uh, the meeting was really effective in helping us discuss the protocols and what would happen first, second, and third, and what's the role of the school and what's the role of the police, fire, or county as we move into any kind of crisis uh, situation. Um, it was very good and it gave us lots of opportunity for discussion and for following up on next steps. So we're making sure now that our buildings are all uh, consistently prepared, that, that the protocols are all in place. They have been over years, many years time, but we're making sure that some of those small details are, are taken care of now. Uh, as well as our police department and police officers are, are coming through our buildings and monitoring, you know, making sure they are familiar with our buildings and wanting that awareness of what's going on within our buildings. So that's very positive for us as well. Then last Monday was our job fair. Uh, we went to the state job fair. Uh, we took staff there to advertise positions, a K-12 for the coming 13-14 school year. And there were several promising um, prospects were interviewed. We had an excellent uh, presentation um, uh, put, put forward by our uh, team there that did just a great job. Um, and then um, I wanted you to know that um, we have um, seven, um, our district is one of seven in the United States that's been accepted by NASA to bring an experiment aboard NASA's reduced gravity flight. The middle school teachers and students are testing how acoustic energy behaves in microgravity. Teachers Becky Stark, Laura Kuchenmeister, Terry Thomas, Ben Thicklin, and Brent Stuffed, along with students, including the King Tech Robotics team, are working now with a NASA mentor to, to design and build the experiment. The teachers will take the experiment to, to NASA this summer. Uh, so that's going to be really exciting to see and fun for the teachers. And unfortunately, students aren't going to be involved in that part of it. And then um, we have just been approved to host the National College Fair with 120 colleges and universities next March 17th, um, 2014, here at Prior Lake High School. So that's going to be very exciting. And congratulations to Stacy Jervinson for making this a possibility. So uh, we've got good news happening this year and next year. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, any other mystery reports? Right. Yes, two quick reports. The first of which is that we did have an insurance committee meeting today, and we will be bringing forward a recommendation from that committee to the May 6th board meeting. So just wanted to keep you up to date there. And then additionally, um, in reference to the job fair,
it was a great day. Um, it was very energizing to see all of the talent out there. And as part of that, too, just to let the board know that we're really trying to um, make sure that we're striking while the iron's hot, so to speak. And you know, we have we came across a number of really talented prospects. We have taken a proactive approach to posting positions earlier than we have in previous years to really try to capture the very best of the best um, that we can there. So again, just a thank you to everyone who participated. Thank you. Um, any other board reports? I don't have a report, but I sure. guess I want to refer back to um, our open forum when the students came to talk about the German class. And um, I thought it was quite impressive that they came to talk about the passion with German. Um, and as I say that, I don't know enough about why we can't offer it to them. And I guess I would like to find out, or the board as a whole would like to know, I assume, um, what we can do about it to address their need. Um, I think it's great if they want to continue it. Um, and, and I don't know all the, the details, so I guess I would like to know that, and then I think that they probably, um, saying they, they're not here, they went home luckily from the snow, but um, they deserve an answer as to why we can't do it or what we could possibly do to meet that need if it's something separate class or whatever. So I guess I'll address that to Jeff and, and to Dave to um, get back to us on that, and I'd like some follow-up to them as well. So It's already in the works. Pardon? It's in the works. I don't know that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot more questions than answers right now. So um, Dave spoke to me before the meeting and said it was definitely in the works. They were working on some yeah. something. Well, I'd appreciate Trying. some public acknowledgement of, sure. of what's going on. Yep, and I commend them for stepping forward. That was phenomenal. Any other board reports? All these signatures appear to be true. True. There's no <laughs> the, the ones in pencil. Yeah, there's no odd <laughs> names in here. That, no, Elvis, no Elvis Presleys. Um, no future Elvis events: We have the school board meeting on uh, March sixth, seven o'clock here for regular meeting. May 6th. I'm sorry, May sixth. It looks like March outside. <laughs> um, May sixth with the school board meeting. The district retirement celebration for our three teachers, or actually two teachers and one secretary at the uh, Twin Oaks Middle School Library, 3.30, and the uh, board study session May 20th at 5 o'clock here at the District Service Center. Any other items for the board? I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. By Dan. Second by Lee. <laughs> Drive safe. Actually, I guess we got to take a vote. I guess yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?